Alrighty guys, welcome back to Star Wars Review. Today I'm doing a review on a Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian Making of Season 2 Finale. Which is, you know, a behind the scenes uh, documentary on uh, The Mandalorian uh, Season 2 uh, Finale. Uh, but uh, this documentary uh, released on uh, August 25th, 2021. So yeah, um, but you know, I uh, I enjoyed it. Um, definitely a deep dive into... Uh, how they made one scene, which was the scene with uh, Luke and whatnot, uh, which I really like, uh, you know, he's making other documentaries, and they dive as deep as they did in just one little moment, uh, which was uh, like a 40 minute uh, special, I guess, uh, devoted to one scene alone, which I, I quite enjoy. Uh, Honestly, I, I enjoyed all the other, uh, this gallery, the Mandalorian stuff, um, but, you know, for making of, uh, documentary stuff, this is definitely, uh, the stuff I enjoyed the most, um, I mean, you know, we see how, you know, they, uh, filmed it and all the, the tech they used to, uh, you know, make Luke look younger and whatnot, uh, um, they showed, they had Mark Hamill there on set to film the scene, and then they had his uh, stand-in. He did all the action scenes, uh, film scene, and then they used did this, like, used this uh, motion capture thing in documentary. They called it the the egg uh, to you know capture uh, Hamill's uh, performance, you know, just the base and whatnot, so they could use it for the uh, CGI stuff and whatnot. Uh, and you know they also go in how they uh, kind of created the uh, voice, you know. Obviously, Mark Hamill doesn't sound like he did, you know, during the original trilogy anymore. So, I can, I guess they use this like program and took, you know, a lot of audio clips from uh, the original trilogy and whatnot, and you know, uh, just high quality audio sound bits they had, you know, from that uh, time and put it into this program to cre- kind of recreate that. His voice and whatnot for the uh, scenes, and they they could create the uh, dialogue, but they needed uh, him to say. Uh, so you know that was interesting. They didn't go super crazy in depth on you know how they created the voice and whatnot. It was kind of a little moment, uh, but you know um, something was also interesting. I definitely like to talk about was you know when doing something like this, creating. Uh, someone's face digitally and whatnot, uh, and, you know, there's, uh, that it, it can be used for, um, you know, bad purposes and whatnot, and, uh, eventually once the tech, uh, starts to get, uh, better and better, you know, become eventually, um, you know, indistinguishable between the, what's fake and what's real and how, you know, that can be a, uh, you know, um, it's not really a good thing and whatnot. I, I like that they at least mention that. You know, they obviously say they're, you know, they're using it for good and whatnot because it's for storytelling reasons. But um, yeah, obviously you know, I in my review for the uh, season two finale and whatnot, um, I'm not really a big fan of uh, and this CGI human face either. The aging or deep fake, deep fake, um, tech or, you know, something like that. I'm not really a big fan of it, mainly because it's weird. Um, mainly, you know, on a visual standpoint, it's weird. It looks fake, and and you know, just you know, like I said, I love of not using it for good, and, uh, and you know, in a way, a storytelling way, it can be used for bad too. I'm not really a big fan when they, uh, you know, it's done with, you know, actors who are actresses who are dead. That's, like, it's very weird to me, and I don't like it. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> I, I, that, that's that's the biggest problem for me, and definitely, you know, movies is when they bring a dead actor back to life. That's, it's just, it has a very weird feeling to me, uh, so yeah, but uh, I'm 
I'm someone I have said it, I would prefer just recasting uh, the character. Uh, but, you know, in, in this, you know, um, how, how was he here? It's Mark Hamill's still alive and, you know, he was there, had permission and whatnot, so it's, I'm fine with that level, but, uh, you know, it is something with, uh, you know, personally, I'm not really a big fan of on any type of level. I, I, I just don't really like it, but, uh, you know, um, anyways, I kind of talked about that for a lot, a lot there, but, uh, you know, um, documentary thing has, um, with me and this is Luke, they also go into, you know, why they decided on, uh, doing it and, you know, it's how, you know, the, uh, pressure and responsibility of, you know, uh, bringing Luke back into this, uh, moment when it's very much his original trilogy, uh, self and whatnot and just, uh, you know, uh, also talking a little bit about how, even though it's not really a a major uh, element is also R2, you bring him back and whatnot too, so, I, uh, joined that, and, you know, they also talk about how, you know, trying to keep it a secret and whatnot, uh, I guess in the, uh, original scripts and whatnot, they said it was Plo Koon, and they went as far as to, like, create, like, a CGI head and, uh, concept art and whatnot of Plo Koon, which, uh, you know, was, that was funny and whatnot, but, uh, you know, made it so secretive, I guess, they filmed the, uh, scene in, like, one day, and, uh, I guess, I believe they mentioned that it was while they were filming the, um, chapter 14, the Boba Fett episode, because, you know, they they were doing a bunch on-location stuff, so they had the, uh, all the stuff to their, you know, just for this scene, and not any, all the crew was there, and just, uh, it was, uh, Really interesting how, you know, secretive they're obviously about it, which, you know, was a good thing to do. Uh, John Favreau does talk about how, you know, Boba Fett, Ahsoka all leaked online and whatnot, and, you know, how they were worried that this was going to leak online, but obviously eventually didn't, which, you know, obviously was a good thing. I, you know, a lot more surprising, a lot better in the, uh, you know, if it leaked online, then it was like, it would have been, you know, the scene would have, you know, I would have liked the scene a lot less than I, uh, would have, um, so yeah, but, uh, you know, it was a interesting, uh, documentary, I, I really enjoyed the more deep dive into, uh, uh, making of stuff, um, I, would have really enjoyed something like this for each episode of, uh, the series. Definitely the, uh, second season. Mainly because, you know, I would have, you know, they, they obviously mentioned the stuff in the uh, making of season two uh, documentary, but just, like, a full episode, mainly it's about the Ahsoka episode, about Boba Fett, you know, Bo-Katan, um, Cobb Vanth episode, and whatnot, just kind of... Big deep dive, mainly with Ahsoka and Boba Fett. Those two, uh, I would have really enjoyed seeing all the thought press, the thought process going into it and whatnot, and just uh, see uh, everything about that. I would have quite enjoyed that. Uh, obviously, what we got in the making of season two documentary was good. I definitely enjoyed that, but you know that was only like an, a little bit over an hour long, or you know this was forty minutes. Just getting 40 minutes about each of those episodes would have been great, but, uh, you know, I, I, this was probably definitely, out of all the Disney Gallery, Mandalorian stuff, is definitely my favorite one, so, yeah, but, uh, you know, anyways, that'll be it for uh, this one, you can check out, um, reviews I did on all the other Disney Gallery stuff, and, uh, obviously the Mandalorian and whatnot, uh, so, yeah, but, um, anyways, you know, that's gonna be it for this one, I've been starting to, you know, Catch you guys in the next one. Show me the one whose safety deemed such destruction. You must.
must reunite it with